Hi guys, uh, welcome to today's webinar. Um, I have here with me our uh, Director of Operations, Seb Hammond. Hey there. Welcome, How thanks for doing? joining me. Thank you. So uh, today we're going to talk about conversational sales uh, and the implementation strategy that can achieve quicker return on investment. Uh, it's a very interesting topic. Thank you for joining me. Um, the SAP has a lot of uh, knowledge and expertise when it comes to implementation of conversational sales, especially in enterprises. Um, you used to work for Facebook, Softonic, big names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> been uh, been here at Wispy for five years. This coming in a month. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Long time. A lot of projects, I guess. A lot of projects implemented. Lots oh, of stuff. Launched. A lot of knowledge to share yeah. with us today. So let's um, look at the agenda. So we're going to talk about today um, what is conversational sales briefly, and then we're going to look into at which stage of digital transformation is your brand at. Um, we're going to talk also about the onboarding that is designed for enterprises and how that, that's the key part. Mm -hmm. And then implementation timeline and what kind of resources you can expect um, to need. And then different implementation types such as stores, call centers, showrooms, which we're gonna explain on uh, real implementation examples from our clients, such as Citroën, Toyota, and Volvo. So let's start with what is conversational sales. Conversational sales basically helps brands connect with the customers on their website in real time, right? So um, we were talking about this before, like today everybody is messaging, everybody is using WhatsApp to talk to their family, friends, so you kind of expect the same things to happen when you are talking to a business. Yeah, yeah, I mean, for me, it's, that's definitely a natural thing that I would expect, right? Exactly. It's, like a dialogue. Uh, you wanna, yeah, you wanna talk with brands now, everybody expects to be uh, getting their service and their answers straight away. Exactly. Um, here we have uh, an example of how um, tradition, traditionally, uh, when it comes to uh, online sales, you would have all these different channels, like a phone number, a form, a click to call, a bot, chatbot. It kind of it gets kind of confusing sometimes because you have so many options, so many pop ups everywhere. You're like, what do I do? Which channel do I choose? You know. So basically, the conversational sales at Wisby is basically joining all these traditional contact channels into one, and then um, the customer can choose, you know, the best way for him to communicate depending on if they want to speak to support or sales or yeah. they just want a quick answer, you know, from a chatbot even. And also just how it, the way that we can build it as well means that yeah. you can put the right lead to the right channel. I think that's the, that's the really important side of it as well, right? So this older style or the, or the things that we're currently seeing on some websites is mm -hmm. it's up to the customers to choose which channel, Yeah. but they don't know which mm -hmm. one, right? They, uh, they get confused, they'll be like starting to ask for a sale of some, a purchase of something yeah. through, a, support through a support channel, right? So, so yeah, the, uh, this, our platform helps yeah. alleviate that problem. And also the frustration, you know, like I just want to speak to somebody, I'll just phone somebody. And then maybe they're calling your support team who can actually sell stuff. Yeah, or the other way around, or which is what usually around. happens, yeah. right? <laughs> So um, let's talk quickly also about benefits of conversational sales. So um, majority of our clients, they choose to implement a conversational sales solution because it helps them differentiate from their competitors. Um, it avoids you know, different friction points such as request forms, which we know everybody hates nowadays. Um, it takes too long you know, to get a reply as a customer. And most importantly, it delivers um, amazing customer experience, which is something that our brands are working hard on. Uh, and it also enables you to engage with customers via different online tools. Mm. Um, and then the results that we've seen from our clients using conversational sales is that they increase online conversion rates, improve customer experience, and also shorten the sales cycles. So now I would like to ask you uh, to participate in our poll today. We have a question for you just to kind of figure out um, what kind of tools are you currently using on your website? So if you could just um, answer this question, which solutions are you using to connect with customers online? I'll just launch the poll quickly. 
right? Yeah. We've got a few options here, right? Yeah. So it's the contact form, traditional contact form. You have uh, click to call, uh, dialing in a 800 number, yeah. uh, chats, uh, and then chatbots. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I know what, what ones would you expect people to be um, I would say, showing uh, today? Definitely form, right? Everybody has a form. Everyone's got forms. Still. Yeah. Since 1992, <laughs> still got their form there. Since the beginning of the internet, yeah, <laughs> they have remained unchanged and somehow marketers, we still love them. I'm, I'm yeah. also guilty of that. It's your fault. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's have a look at the results. Um, we had 50% of our um, viewers today answered that they use a contact form. It's a multiple choice question, so the percentages are they're not added to 100. 50% um, said that they um, use 0, 0800 numbers still, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. And everybody participating today also has uh, a chat available on the website, which brings me back to the slide about um, how, to how to enter the digital era with success. So it's clear from this poll that uh, brands are still using various contact options on Different their websites, yeah. um, mainly because they, none of them has, you know, higher enough conversion mm. to justify to be the only contact channel. True. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, um, so here we have a comparison. Um, of different online channels and their conversion rates. So this is what I mentioned before. Um, forms, chats, phones, you know, they, they, they are at the lowest part when mm -hmm. it comes to conversion rates. Forms convert around one to two percent if they're really good ones. Um, chats between two and four percent. Phones, seven to eight. And these are all very optimistic numbers, I have to say, um, coming from marketing. Mm -hmm. I see this kind of conversion rates every day. And I would be very happy with them, to be honest. And then when we look at stores and the way people are used to buy face-to-face, -face, traditionally talking to somebody, the conversion rates are just skyrocketed, 15 to 30%, um, which is exactly how high we see conversion rates when people, uh, when brands use conversational sales solutions such as Wisby. Mm -hmm. Because you bring that, um, you know, personal um, touch that approach, to yeah. online sales. Getting that, that the benefits of... Uh, walking into that store and mm -hmm. talking to someone that knows what they're doing and helping you in the right way. Exactly. Uh, you're more likely to get that credit card out and buy something. Yeah. yeah. And also, um, I don't know about you, but like I would use a chat if I have a complaint or I want to talk about something, but not like, like specifically to buy. Yeah. It's typically, uh, yeah, a lot of, it's definitely more of a, mm -hmm. more of a support channel, right? Yeah. Somewhere where it's like typically where you would go and do something neutral or negative. But like, if you're trying to really get a hold of someone and do something, something positive. yeah, I don't know, find out something a bit more interesting, you yeah, yeah, try and find another channel. Yeah. Um, sorry, okay, so quickly, I wanted to explain today um, the six stages of digital transformation and kind of um, make you think a little bit about where you think your business is at. Um, right now. Um, so for example, we have the first stage which is called business as usual. Um, <clears throat> it means that basically you're still using very familiar legacy um, perspective of your customers, your processes. Um, you, your business is not, does not believe that they need to change anything. They're kind of happy with the status quo and they're like, we're, we're, we don't need any change, we're fine as it is, you know, nobody kind of wants to take any initiative. Yeah. Don't rock the boat, yeah. keep it as it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Then the second one is called present and active, which basically means that you're kind of starting with a little bit of experimentation, you're aiming to improve and maybe amplify a specific touch points and processes maybe uh, doing some A-B tests with uh, different solutions. Maybe you start using a chat rather than just a form. Mm -hmm. And then the next stage is called formalized. So basically you have, um, you're still doing experiments, but they have become like very much intentional. So you try to develop initiatives and become bolder. And as a result, um, you try to 
change stuff and create these change agents inside your, in, uh, inside your business and get the executive support um, and try to get new resources to implement new technologies that you have discovered. And then in the strategic stage, um, it's basically when you already have some roadmaps in place for digital transformation, you have a person who has the ownership of this process in, inside the company and also you have the investment that you can use for these kind of initiatives. The next stage is called conversion. And it basically means that you have a dedicated digital transformation team that forms uh, and guides the strategy and operations um, based on very customer centric goals. Mm -hmm. So you're very much aware of what customers want, what customers need, and maybe also what your competitors are already doing and you're not. And then the last stage is called innovative and adaptive. Uh, and this is when you know digital transformation becomes basically a way the way that you do business and your executives and your strategies recognize that the change is constant you constantly need to be aware of you know new technologies um, new maybe customer requirements on the market and you have no fear of change mm. it's kind of the way you work all the time so now we want to ask you another question to find out what you think at what stage of the digital transformation uh, is your brand at. I'm gonna launch the poll, just give me a second. All right. All right, so let's see where, where yeah. our viewers today, where they, where they position their companies, right? Yeah, so, um, I mean, you have worked with numerous enterprises in different industries over these five years at Wisby. Um, what do you think at which stage are most of them when they start using with the business as usual, present and active, mm. formalized, strategic, conversion? Um, I would say most companies come to us at least at a kind of formalized stage. Mm -hmm. But we've had, we've had experience with customers that are, um, let's say there's, mm -hmm. there, there can be like people that are inside the enterprise. Mm -hmm that are trying to make a change for the first time. We've seen that quite a lot of the times, the first time in their teams and, uh, and departments and their whole company is business as usual, but yeah. they're the ones that are trailblazing, right? Exactly. So they're, they're, they're looking for something that can help them take things yeah. out, of the, out of the past. Mm. Right? I also think like in recent years, like I've been at this before three years now, and at the beginning, with like the job titles that I would come across were usually marketing or sales, you know, they were doing a bit of online stuff. But nowadays, I see a lot of like chief digital officer, yeah. chief customer experience. It's really expanded. Exactly. Yeah. I think um, brands are starting to become more and more formalized and strategic when it comes to digital transformation. It, it, it really depends on the vertical as well, right? So yeah. some verticals are a lot more traditional. Let's say I know your banking and your insurance yeah. companies will typically not have those departments yet, or they're just starting on that road. But then maybe other other areas, mm -hmm. I'd say telco, right? Yeah. They're, they're probably the most advanced, at least out of the, the verticals that we look at mm -hmm. when it comes to what they're looking for. All right, so we have some results here. Okay, so 10% um, of you answer that you are present and active, 60% um, answered strategic, which is really good, yeah. and then we have 30% uh, saying innovative and adaptive. Okay. Which is really cool, no? That's great. Is that so um, we've got some pros here. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's why they're attending the webinar as well. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And these are uh, some of the brands that uh, we, we work with and we have implemented conversational sales solution for them. Would yeah. you like to maybe give us a brief quickly? Yeah. Um, so I guess um, we can look at I know, let's say Hyundai here, so Hyundai, Hyundai in the US, Hyundai in the UK. Um, they, uh, in Mexico, they started um, just by having a go uh, at, at Wisby. Right? Mm -hmm. So they chose a, a quite easy entry point product of ours where they're able to give live broadcasts um, to their visiting uh, web viewers. Mm -hmm. And um, then they quickly saw that there was a lot of interest mm -hmm. and they added... They had like a million viewers or something crazy. Like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After six months yeah. or something, yeah. It um, was really, uh, really, really high numbers of engagement. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to capitalize on that engagement. And they saw they, they didn't realize the demand would be so big. Yes. 
and now they've uh, they've gone into conversational with us, so they're using our conversational uh, interactivity options there, so they're able to, um, in an unassisted way, bring leads out of that engaged pool of viewers and uh, and uh, start contacting them and, and get get them into the dealerships with test drives and so on. Um, yeah, now they're on their road to, let's say, to, to, well, they, they are definitely a, a more a formalized, you know, um, a, 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 actually I'd say probably at the other end of the scale yeah. like they're, they're pushing towards, as a brand, I'd say they're definitely up there with the, the highest ones as far as engagement with, with uh, online tools and, and, um, and new channels. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so it's been really a, a great journey seeing how Hyundai has, uh, as advanced. And now um, I want to talk a little bit about the onboarding for enterprises. Um, I really very much agree with the, the one size does not fit all when it comes to enterprises. Mm -hmm. um, I know there are a lot of solutions out there for conversational sales, conversational marketing, but most of them are kind of plug and play, no support, here's your solution, goodbye. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that really works for enterprises. No, no, definitely not. Um, the the primary reason for that is that every enterprise is uh, it's just so big, it has so many different moving parts and departments and stakeholders involved, that there are, there are lots of different things that have become highly personalized and specialized to that particular brand. Mm -hmm. right? the, the tone that they speak to their customers in, the way that they um, handle you, the, the, the kind of the customer journey that they want to take you yeah. through. Um, you know, if you give them a one size fits all product, um, or even one that they can just kind of modify themselves and say, okay, that's me done, and it goes, mm -hmm. it's just not likely to last. At least it won't work for a very long time. Yeah. So for us with, with onboarding, the way that we look at it is that we're, first of all, we have the experience, mm -hmm. uh, having worked with enterprises, like I mentioned for the last 10 years, we have a huge, um, portfolio of, um, examples and projects where we have had to jump through crazy hoops, mm -hmm. uh, tick an incredible amount of boxes yeah. to align with the needs of these enterprises. Exactly. You know? um, some of the larger groups in the US, for example, I mean, the, you know, the compliance that you have to go through at an IT level, you know, and the, the audits, the, audits, yeah. the 350 page, you know, global compliance that you need to, that you need to provide. Mm -hmm. All of these things are, you know, it's, it, it can be difficult, but it's something that once, you know, you, you need to have gone through multiple times as a company to know where to start, mm -hmm. how to handle it, and then deliver everything alongside that and deliver it on time and meet really aggressive deadlines. And mm -hmm. like it says here, we have to align with marketing launches as well. So yeah. there's a lot of teams involved. And, um, and yeah, it's, it's just, a, it's a feat of, of project management mm -hmm. and people management. Right? Yeah. Because you have so many different teams that you have to keep happy. So with yeah. that experience, I think that yeah, the onboarding onboarding of enterprises in general mm -hmm. is a challenge. Mm -hmm. But we have put together a way of doing that that respects the needs of our enterprises and also respects mm -hmm. timelines and and project requirements to meet the performance. Yeah, because um, in your time here, I think you've developed a lot um, this part of our business, which is you know, supporting our clients from the day they sign with us mm -hmm. when they purchase the solution. So SAV is actually leading three departments within uh, WISBY, which is um, the implementation department, the training department, front end, which delivers the service, and mm -hmm. also the support. Yeah, so you have to do your hands full. Yeah, it's quite a lot to do, but I mean, it's all about it's all about aligning all of the, the client facing teams really. Um, so we have very close connections with the customer success team as well, because they will then follow through and look after that client throughout the rest of their journey with us. So, um, so yeah, I mean, like on this slide it mentions here we have, so customer success is there, mm -hmm. implementation gets you started, but then also is always available to you when you need it. Mm -hmm. So imagine just like the Hyundai Mexico uh, example, you have, um, a project that you initially start with, mm -hmm. but then you want to use or, or increase your engagement with your customers. So you, you have your customer success team to guide you what would be best. Your implementation team comes in, gets you going with that new feature. Mm -hmm. um, and throughout all of that, we have our, our support team to make sure that, um, you know, any issues that you're experiencing or any things that you want to change, 
Mm -hmm. it's, it's always been catered to. So um, yeah, I think that's the, the differentiation there is, is very big when it comes to enterprise. You know, an, an enterprise client is a demanding client because they have ultimately a, a very demanding um, customer base. Mm -hmm. right? Um, I'm demanding. I hate when my service provider doesn't give me what I want. Yeah. And imagine that times 20 million yeah. for a telco mm -hmm. provider, for yeah. example, right? So you have to, you have to work to that uh, expectation. I think this slide is very um, important because, you know, a lot of, as I mentioned, there are a lot of solutions out there that could offer similar or yeah, similar solutions that with us. But I think what is important here is that we are your partner. To success so basically when you buy Wisby you don't just buy the solution you buy all the knowledge mm. and all the expertise that we have gained over the years working with enterprises just like yours you know in different industries so I think that's a big plus it's huge. Um, and then here um, I would like you to explain to us quickly the streamline implementation process you know like here it says it takes around eight weeks or so yeah um, depending on how ready the client is yeah yeah I mean it's it's very much dependent on the project of course that mm -hmm. you're sorry that you're used that you're expecting to to, uh, to launch mm -hmm. um, one of the big things that we do um, so PO signature is just a formality ultimately mm -hmm. it's it marks the beginning of a project but for us a, a project actually begins a few weeks before that um, so our sales team works very closely in scoping out needs and understanding exactly what kind of project we're going to be signing, and then um, we support all of those uh, all of those stakeholders that are involved. Initially, we we make sure that they're supported through into the uh, the actual implementation proper. Um, so uh, we have here a few milestones that that are typical of most um, most implementations. Again. We don't standardize 100% because enterprise needs to be flexible as to what they need and when. Mm -hmm. um, but the most important thing here is that when we kick off, we bring everybody together, mm -hmm. we get them all around the table, all yeah. the stakeholders, and essentially, you know, we're there to show everybody what this solution can do. Mm -hmm. You know, because we're also highly aware of the fact that you may have an innovation team um, that's there or somebody that has come from um, a decision maker that's come from a completely different area that has decided, right, this is awesome. I'm sold. I want this. And then they might take that solution, they sponsor it, but then they're going to give it to a team that's never seen it before to implement it, right? The operational guys have never seen Wisby before. So this is constant so it's, re pitching. It's, it's re-education. It's re-education all the time. It's keeping everybody in the loop. And it's, it's being able to speak to different levels of interest and different personas, right? Yeah. Everybody inside your organization is a different kind of buyer persona. Ultimately, they have to buy in to, uh, to make the project a success. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have a lot of experience dealing with operational teams, which we have a specific implementation, implementation specialists dedicated to looking after that relationship. Mm -hmm. um, our customer success team is, uh, is you know, specialist in driving performance, understanding about KPIs, setting targets with your team and making mm -hmm. sure that the team um, performs and that the project performs. Mm -hmm. um, so we get through a lot of that in, in the kickoff uh, conference. We would then go through a consultation period, typically lasts around two weeks. Mm -hmm. The consultation is basically fleshing out the project itself, making sure that it's gone from a concept to a achievable plan. Yeah. Right, we set that plan down, we say, right, there's the, there's the deadlines, this is the launch date, these are the things that we have to do. All of the respective people that are responsible for each piece have been identified. Mm -hmm. um, we work out what needs to be worked on in parallel. Again, every enterprise does things differently. Maybe it takes you six weeks to upload a new piece of code to your website. Yeah. because you use an agency or it takes you a day because it's in-house yeah. but then it takes you six weeks to get new people to work for as agents in your assisted drive for example right because of your local laws these things have to be discussed and we have to understand who takes what piece to yeah. deliver everything on time mm -hmm. so everything is taken into account we, we put it all together in a plan that we sign off on and and we 
and we're getting the job done. So um, the rest of it is ultimately implementing, mm -hmm. you know, the technical elements, producing the service on our side, delivering, mm -hmm. working on feedback to make sure that the UX is the one that you want. Yeah. Everybody loves the UX, love right? <laughs> And, um, and then testing, of course, because it's a, it's a live product yeah. inside of a real environment, so we need to make sure that it's all working, working correctly. And we always support our clients on site as well when it comes to the day, of, uh, when it comes to launch. So we're training all the people involved in using the tool, and then we, uh, and then we go live. Mm -hmm. And once we go live, we don't leave you alone. You know, We make sure that you're fully supported with, uh, with the rest of our team as well. Awesome. So um, let's quickly jump into the different implementation types. Mm -hmm. So, <coughs> sorry, based on um, your resources as a, as a brand, we have uh, different implementation types on how you can connect your online audience with your experts. So those experts can be either based in stores and showrooms, mm -hmm. in call centers, or in case you don't have a call center or an appropriate showroom or a store, you can always work with home-based agents. Um, so let's uh, look at it into these uh, examples on uh, case by case. So the first one that we can talk about here is the Citroen. Um, they have managed to generate over 1,100 pre-sales uh, online through our live video chat. Mm -hmm. And they are using home-based agents. Yeah, yeah. so it's a, it's a great setup because Wisby is a very um, light technology to implement on the uh, agent side. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, anyone that has a laptop, a Chrome browser, and, uh, and, a, and a webcam, that's optional, but I mean, if you wanted to have your webcam there and, okay. and you've got the right look of a, of a home-based agent and the right background, you're there. Uh, internet, of course, needs an internet connection and a phone line, and then uh, and away they go. So these home-based agents, they can, be, they can be anywhere, anywhere, literally yeah. anywhere in the world, and uh, you would train them uh, remotely on your product, and then Wisby does the uh, Wisby training. Yes. And in the space of you know a couple of days, if needed, that person can become a, an agent, uh, a rep mm. for your for your product. Yeah. Um, you mentioned yeah, you mentioned the phone line, showing. but we also launched a late, uh, our latest um, release was something called Void. Yes. Right yeah. Now. Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. that's true. So yeah, we can. Uh, you don't even need a phone line on the agent side. It can be uh, done through our VoIP app on the agent side. Mm -hmm. So essentially, internet is all we need. Yeah, yeah. Super, so cool. it's super light. Um, Citroen, quickly to show you some numbers of their success with USB. They had 58% um, conversion rate, as I mentioned, over 1,000 qualified leads, and 97% customer satisfaction rate. Um, mm -hmm which is an MPS survey that uh, we show after every session mm -hmm. through the solution. I guess just to, because these, these numbers will be repeated, right? So 58% um, conversion rate, that's the number of contacts yes. that they're having through, the, through, this, through our tool yes. um, that are converted into a test drive or a quote. Yes. Right? So uh, that's compared to the two, one to two percent of the form. Rate. Yeah. The next one uh, that we can mention is uh, Toyota, our mm. longest standing client. And they basically created a lead generation machine with WSB, as we will see. Uh, maybe you can tell us a bit more about this project. Yeah, um, so these guys, um, like any enterprise, wants to start small to make sure you know this is a good fit for them. So they started with, uh, with just a basic kind of one-to-one uh, -one solution that WSB provides. Um, it was then seen that there was a great demand for this kind of experience. They expanded, they brought, it, they brought in a, a live showroom, mm -hmm. allowing the agents to show the product live using the cameras on their smartphone or uh, mm -hmm. externally positioned cameras around the car, mm -hmm. um, and give clients that dealership kind of intro so that they would get that first look of a brand new car, maybe cars that weren't even, exit, that weren't even released yet, yeah. or aren't even released yet, mm -hmm. and, uh, and get people, you know, get people uh, into the dealerships so that they uh, test, test drive the cars. So we were seeing that not only were the number of test drives going up considerably, you know, like a huge change in their numbers. Yeah. Um, so yeah, 200 test drives a month, and this is just from organic traffic reaching their website. Yeah, small campaigns. Um, and uh, and also, 
the quality, you don't have it on the side, but the quality of the lead entering that dealership yeah. was, uh, was, was significantly increased, right? So, percent more qualified leads. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. and the 95% customer satisfaction rate, again, mm. um, very, very good experience. For yeah, so it's, it's hand in hand with NPS as well, right? Everybody yes. needs um, high NPS right now. Is the NPS is what we hear from all of our enterprise clients, yes. right? It's, 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 all it's amazing, experience. right? It's all about experience. Yeah. Like, it's almost like you turn up to the door and say, we can help you sell more. And they're like, no, tell me about NPS. Yeah. You know, it's, exactly. it's, it, that's the conversations that, uh, that's, that have been going on. And they, uh, yeah, it's, it's allowing for both. Okay. And then uh, our last case study today is how um, Vodafone's virtual store increased their online sales by 25%. Um, you want to talk about this project a bit? So they used a call center, right? Yeah, yeah. So kind of a traditional, it was a revolution of a traditional call center yeah. kind of concept, right? So you have your call center, you can activate any, any call center agent. Um, to use WSBI, um, yeah. very simple implementation, a bit like the uh, home-based agents. Mm -hmm. um, typically, call centers already have 99% of the, the gear needed. You know, it's, uh, it's just a few tweaks and you can get it working. Um, so you don't even need to invest in a whole load of hardware. Mm -hmm. After seeing that, that that was something that was really working in a, with a small kind of corner, they expanded and uh, have, have a really impressive um, mm -hmm. online showroom. Yeah. where it's, it's closed off from the public, no, no people kind of walking in and out, it's just a part of the call center. Mm -hmm. But from that call center, people are able to enter in, the agents are able to enter into this uh, mock-up of the store mm -hmm. and show real products to the customers. Mm -hmm. and, and this gives them that full um, store experience and the drive of, uh, of conversion rate. Yeah, we started with Vodafone in Spain um, three or four years ago. Yeah, and like since that. then we've expanded in many countries. Um, we also got a global contract with Vodafone, mm -hmm. which we're very proud of, yeah. which means that they trust our solution. And, um, and this is an example of Vodafone Germany. They have on average 15 agents connected every day to um, the WSB platform. Yeah, from the call center. Mm -hmm. the call center, and they are um, attending meetings online, and their KPIs are really good. And they also did an a B test, which is also something interesting, I think. So they ran a campaign who, uh, and the leads coming to the landing page without WSB and with WSB. So they've seen that the landing page that had WSB and enabled customers to connect with their agents in real time had an 18% conversion rate compared to the one without, which was 7%, yeah. which means that basically including the investment they made in the WSB technology for every euro spent, it equaled 51 euros in additional sales, which I think is huge. incredible. Yeah. It pays for itself and mm. more. Um, and then the latest project with Vodafone, that we can quickly mention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, basically bringing the, the, the technology to stores, right? Mm -hmm. So these are publicly accessible stores on the high street. Mm -hmm. um, the idea being that your agents or your sales reps on the floor you know, in an eight hour shift during the day, there are downtimes, there are peak times and downtimes. Yeah. So um, you're able to utilize those, those agents inside of, your, inside of your stores to take calls when they're available. Right? So our technology can detect availability um, and, uh, and work to bring um, the, the online mm -hmm. consumer in through the doors almost of yeah. a standard store. Basically our solution works a bit like Uber. If I'm sure everybody's familiar with Uber or Mm -hmm. uh, any other on-demand app yeah. where the request would be sent to maybe the nearest agent or the agent that has that specific product in stock mm -hmm. uh, in a specific store and has obviously the WSB app so that they can answer their calls. Yeah. Um, and they have eight agents for now and uh, some results from February, they, they have attended all, over 2,000 leads and had 15% conversion rates from those WSB sessions. Yeah. Which is amazing. Yeah, it's great, great result. Great job with the implementation. It's the whole team that did it. Yeah, okay. that's true. <laughs> and I just want to finish off with a um, quote that uh, we got from Julia, who is the head of digital assisted sales for online projects at Vodafone Germany. And she said that more than two thirds of their customers said that uh, WSB technology really stand out from, made them stand out from their competitors in the market. 
and that it has positively influenced uh, their online sales and they also see a higher sales conversion rate compared to traditional form channel, for example, mm -hmm. which I guess is due to our conversational uh, features that mm -hmm. we offer, like web sharing. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a much more yeah, interactive yeah. experience, yeah. transparency, you yeah. see your agent, you, uh, it's, it's harder to put the phone down. Exactly. <laughs> well, over to you guys. Um, please um, message us if you have any questions. We're going to be happy to answer. Um, oh, we already have one. Uh, this one is from Mike. So I think you'll be able to answer this one, Seth. How much customization does WISB allow? Um, yeah, so um, essentially the the user experience on the, on the customer side um, is designed in a way to allow brand alignment, mm -hmm. colors, texts, uh, sorry, so colors, fonts, styles. Mm -hmm. the, the look and feel is going to be like something that is, that is native or near native to your website. Um, now, obviously, it, as a solution, as a SaaS solution, we can't provide something that you can 100% change every shape, every module, yeah. because um, ultimately this has to work on so many different combinations of device mm -hmm. and browser and so on, right? Mm -hmm. So, so the, the, the system is built to, you know, it's, it's heavily tested on all the major uh, device and browser combinations. And yeah. we have these you know, specific modules, mm -hmm. but these modules are, like I said, um, can brand align them and then all of the copy, all of the text, everything in the imagery and so on is 100% yeah. uh, customized. I think one thing that we can mention is that we've been not a white label solution, so um, that kind of things cannot be changed. But yeah. Anything else, we can make it as much um, as your brand as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next one here from Alex. Um, how many agents do you recommend starting off with? How do you scale up? Um, so it really, one, one way of looking at it is if you already have a call center or you have a team that is, that is, uh, attending online calls or you know, contacts, mm -hmm. you should be able to get an idea of your traffic already and yeah. then your, your contact rate. Kind of predict. Yeah. You can predict already based on existing structures. If you don't have that, then we can also do calculations based off of your, um, website traffic. Mm -hmm. So. You know, if you're a specific vertical with a certain amount of traffic, mm -hmm. then we can run that through a basic calculator um, and get an idea of mm -hmm. roughly the number of you know sessions that you're going to get mm -hmm. uh, per hour, mm -hmm. and then you can you can just extrapolate from that and, and work out the number of agents. Or you can start with unassisted first. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So so then you can see what your demand is, okay. right? So without even having the call center in place or, or any humans uh, on the other end, mm -hmm. you drop in the unassisted flow, which would just be basically a conversational um, uh, sales uh, solution mm -hmm. that allows you to, that allows your customers to book things for themselves, make purchases for themselves, mm -hmm. but in a conversational way. Yeah. Um, and then the number of times that gets completed, what these started, mm -hmm. starts giving you an idea of the amount of demand that you have. Yeah. And you can use your unassisted, uh, your assisted, option and drop it in mm -hmm. where the drop-offs are highest, right? So mm -hmm. when you're building these right. automatic conversations, it'll be like, oh, I can see that when I ask someone for the name or the ID number, 70% mm -hmm. of people will switch off. So then that's where you want to give someone the option to speak to a real person. Yeah. Maybe yeah. feel more comfortable sharing their info. Yeah, exactly. Okay, the next question here I have from Marie. Um, are solutions like WISB time consuming or complicated to set up on a website? Um, the website itself is probably the smallest issue or the, or the, let's say, you know, we always work with blockers, right? And that's, that's how it is. Implementation and project setup, you're always looking to minimize the number of blockers. Yeah. The website of things is rarely a blocker. Mm -hmm. um, Ultimately, because we're not looking for your web teams to make any changes to your particular website structure, mm -hmm. um, it's just a it's just a layer that, that drops in on top of your existing infrastructure. It's just a JavaScript, right? Mm -hmm. So you're putting a JavaScript um, which fires whenever the page loads, and that means that an experience will appear on top of everything that you already have. Yeah. Doesn't, mess with the or doesn't 
doesn't interact with your website, doesn't touch your, your website statistics, has nothing to do with speed of loading or anything like that because it just fires and then it starts talking to the WISBY server. So mm. any delays on our side would never delay you know, your website side. So yeah, the website itself, the implementation is usually um, the least of our worries. Um, what can take the time is simply your internal um, structure. Mm -hmm. So if you have an agency that you need to tell three weeks in advance to make changes for, or you have to fit it into a sprint, mm -hmm. then maybe you, you just have to account for that. Right? It's yeah. like, okay, we give them the code and we'll be live in a month. Okay. So, thank you. Okay. And then um, another question, I think we still have time for one more, um, from Catherine. How secure is the WSB platform? Are you GDPR compliant? I guess that's a common... Yeah, um, well, security, first of all, we've worked with the world's um, biggest banks and insurance companies. Um, and security, they yeah, they are, they are the <laughs> best slash worst, right? I mean, they, they obviously looking after people's money. Um, they have to get it right, so the compliance and security audits that we go through can, uh, you know, they just, they just make your head spin. Yeah. But um, we've done it many times, so uh, so it's not really, uh, it's not a problem for us. Mm -hmm. um, so we comply to all, you know, the, the security requirements, mm -hmm. um, encryption, um, we use HTTPS, um, everything on that side is fully covered. Um, we use um, Amazon Web Servers, right, to post our... Exactly, yeah, Amazon Web Services. So, you know, they, uh, they have incredibly high um, you know, standards for, for encryption yeah. as well. Um, and then we also have ways to adapt to your needs mm -hmm. for your particular company policies. So maybe you're not, you can't allow a third-party company to hold personal data of a, of a client yeah. for more than 24 hours or okay. 24 days or however long it is. So we can set everything up to do that. We can... Um, we also we can, have the private cloud option, right? Private cloud, so all of the data that is involved in your services 100% separated away from any other company um, uh, services as far as the, the location on the server, mm -hmm. uh, which is a requirement in some cases. Yeah. <laughs> um, what else? We also can obscure information. So even when it comes down to the agents using the tool, exactly. we can make sure that if a customer accidentally starts putting their credit card pin in, into, the, into the chat, then uh, the agent just won't see it. It will be, uh, it'll be blacked out. So, um, yeah, and then the GDPR, 100% yeah. GDPR compliant. We've invested um, an eye-watering amount of money into making sure that that yeah. works perfectly and that it is 100% compliant. Yeah. And not only that, it can help you, as our client, collect GDPR consent exactly. from your clients when yeah. they start using the service, which is... Um, Cool. Yeah. Yes, it is. Well, thank you guys for joining. Thank you, Seth, for um, hosting today's webinar and being yeah. the expert and explaining to our audience all the cool stuff that you know about implementing conversational sales in enterprises. It's been a pleasure. And um, yeah, it's been great seeing so many questions and people interacting to me. Yeah. Um, cool. Thanks for having me. Sure. Thank you. Cool. Thank you, guys. Bye. Great.